Mr. Sass, a notorious villain in DC Comics, made his first appearance in Batman Shadow of the Bat No. 1 in 1992. Created by Alan Grant and Norm Bray Paul, Victor Sass is a deranged serial killer who carves a tally mark into his skin for each of his victims. His background is that of a once wealthy and successful businessman who lost his family and fortune, leading to a mental breakdown and an encounter with Batman, which solidified his transformation into a homicidal maniac. Says brutal and psychotic nature makes him a formidable adversary for Batman. Over the years, he has appeared in various comic book storylines, animated series, and live-action adaptations including Batman Begins and the television series Gotham. Says character is often used to highlight the darker and more disturbing aspects of Gotham City's criminal underworld. Hey you everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving deep into Gotham's underworld with one of the darker and more disturbing Batman villain, Mr. Sass. I must admit, the first time I have read about Victor Sass, he really gave me a scare because this is as close as a Batman villain can get to reality. Just one homicidal serial killer. And those tally marks in his skin? basically represents Batman's failure to protect Gotham. Now, let's start with the packaging. The front of the box prominently displays McFarlane Gold Labor Collection DC Multiverse Mr. Sass. It has a huge clear window where we can see the figure and all that comes with it. On the right side, you'll see McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Mr. Sass. The left side continues the window display and also says McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Mr. Sass. Finally, the back of the box features artwork of Mr. Sass from the comics. I kind of wish he actually looked like this artwork because I know that this kind of look is one of McFarlane's forte when it comes to sculpt. That's it for the packaging. Now, let's crack this open and see if McFarlane did justice to this version of Sass in action figure form. The figure scales at 7 inches or 18 centimeters. For accessories, he comes with a standard McFarlane art card with a short biography at the back. And a standard McFarlane base with a DC logo. And the knife, which he is already holding now. And that's it for the accessories. Okay, now let's have a closer look at the figure. Since this is an obvious reuse of the Blue Beetle mold, the one thing that we need to focus on is the head sculpt. Because this will be the one that's new. I actually like this head sculpt. Initially, when I look at, look at it in the packaging, I was kind of wishing that he looks more like this. You know, kind of scary. But now that I look at it here, it is actually a pretty good looking head sculpt. This is actually how I remember him when I first read about him in the comics. I think I think the first time I read about Sess is in the Nightfall storyline. He really gave me a scare because, as I said, this is as close as it gets for a real Batman villain in real life. I do like the Johnny Bravo looking glasses, but this is also how I remember him look like in the comics. I like the evil smirk that he has yeah this is definitely possible 
this is definitely Victor's ass. I love this head sculpt. He really looks villain. Since the blue beetle torso and arms are basically a blank canvas, I guess, yeah, this will really pass for a figure that is basically half naked, wearing no shirt. But yeah, this is basically the design of Victor Sass uh, with those uh, tally marks that he put on his skin as a reminder of the number of people or victims he had. Which, yeah, this is actually what scared me when I first saw this character. When I saw all of this tally mark, I was wondering, wow, man. That's the number of times Batman basically, you know, failed trying to stop him. One thing that I note, though, is that he doesn't have any mark on the back. I'm not sure if that's comic accurate, but I do rem Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I think Based from my memory, he does. He also has tally marks at his back, but not now that I'm thinking logically, how will he reach his back to put tallies there? I mean, unless someone else helps him put the mark there, I don't think we can reach. I, I don't think he can reach it on his own. So it does make sense that his back is clean, because yeah, unless someone else he has someone else to put the tally mark there, he cannot reach that. One good thing that I want to put note about this figure is despite of the fact that it is a reuse of the Blue Beetle mold is that, well, at least they make an effort in the retool. This diaphragm portion, specifically the belt, is actually a molded, molded detail and not just painted over. So that's good. That's a good effort on them. That's an additional detail for a pig figure that is very simple because it's basically, you know, a, girl, a guy with no shirt and wearing jeans. The bottom figure, I know that this is Blue Beetle fart. This is a Blue Beetle mold. But this bottom, I think, I'm not sure if this is a new mold or if it is from another mold, but this is quite different because, yeah, again, I like the effort that they did here to change this and actually make him, you know, barefoot, which is very, very accurate. Uh, not accurate. Basically, I think it does represent it represents something that the character would do, being barefoot. So, yeah. Simple retool, but I believe it works. I think this is a win for McFarlane. For the articulation, I don't think there would be any surprise there since this is the Blue Beetle mold. And I do like the one of the things that I like about the Blue Beetle mold is that as far as articulation, it is actually pretty good. So for the head, you can do that. You can look down like that. You can look up a little. That's going to be a hindrance. And then he has a cut waist rotation which together works really perfectly yep yep for the hands he can do the t pose and that again i wish mcperlene will go back to the drawing board on how to improve that because i don't really like this design then he has a bicep cut, double jointed elbow, double peg wrist. Then for the leg, this is actually one of those molds where the thigh, thigh articulation actually works. Double jointed knee then for the ankle it has that swivel then there's that and then there's also rotation here then of course what i like about mcferlin the toe articulation it can kick 
that far you can kick back that far so you can partially do the split then you can also do the bend down and that's it for the articulation this is another simple retool of the blue beetle mold which actually works at least they changed some parts to be more compatible with the look of the character rather than lazily painting over it and ignoring the obvious sculpt of the base mold. Anyway, Mr. Sass is one of the Batman villains that I find really disturbing, and I'm surprised they were able to make him in action figure form without any issues. If you reached this part of my video, thanks a lot. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe if you like my video. And as always, enjoy life and keep collecting.